Yasmin, it's fantastic to have you here in Sheffield. The annual Crick Lecture, named after Sir Bernard Crick. I understand that you knew Bernard. Can you just tell me a little about, bit about how you knew him? I can't remember exactly when we met, but we got to know each other really well. Um, so every time I was up in um, Edinburgh, he would cook me a meal oh. uh, in his lovely flat, which you kind of had to go down these steps. And we had lots to talk about. We, uh, he brought me onto the advisory group, which, uh, which David Plunkett was running for the citizenship mm -hmm. curriculum. At that time, he was very keen on the idea of, a, of citizenship education, as was I, mm -hmm. as I still am. Um, but over the years, we also talked about devolution a lot and identity. Um, uh, we'd have arguments like he, I hate the word tolerance. Mm -hmm. I want more than tolerance, mm. please. Mm. And he thought uh, actually tolerance was the perfect word okay. because it meant, however, you know, just just that little step will make a difference. Mm. So we had, mm. we became very close friends. And then, of course, the Orwell Prize um, I used to attend. And then my proudest moment was when he was alive and I got a mm -hmm. prize. Two thousand and two. Yeah, political journalism. Um, so yeah. It was okay. an unlikely um, a relationship, really. Yes. And he was quite a character. He was great. Did he influence you at all in relation to how you view Englishness? I think he made me think about it because he was one of the first people to give it thought. And he wrote uh, a book and he uh, there were some very interesting kind of first-time thoughts mm -hmm. about what's happening. And he, I, I think that he was the first among a very few people to understand a constitutional rearrangement doesn't end there. Mm, mm. It leads to all kinds of emotional um, and deeper reactions in populations mm. and that you can't keep saying to England, oh, Scotland can have this, mm, Wales can be mm, this, but mm. you just are, mm, you know, you mm. just have to kind of, mm. because you're the biggest. I mean, he, he understood the power of if you like, political emotion. Mm, mm. And your book is, it, it's amazing for its breadth and its depth, and Bernard would have loved it, because it's very much in a, yeah. in a Crickian tradition. It is. And it, and it talks about political events that are big P politics, but it, it talks about the importance of language and dress and accents. Um, can you just, in, in a nutshell, tell us, what, what is the, the central theme of your journeys around exotic England? Well, it is telling the other, in my view, true story of England. England is not little. England is not this twitchy, mean little country that is how it's been portrayed, sometimes by Englanders themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. including Orwell, mm -hmm. including P.G. Woodhouse, um, uh, 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 D.H. Lawrence, you know, that this is a mean, nasty little country. It isn't. 93%, I think, of us migrants live in England. And most of us, I reckon, would not live anywhere else. It's tough. It's very tough. The hostility burns you sometimes. But actually, we wouldn't live in France. Mm. Most of us wouldn't live in Scotland. Mm. Most of our, So there is something about the porous nature of England, which goes back through its history, mm. um, that is both in challenging, but is the real story of this extraordinary country. You know, Shakespeare named his first theatre the Globe. Mm. This was as Englishness was forming. What does that tell you about mm. these island people? It doesn't tell you they are sort of Yukipi people who want to turn the lights off and just keep mm. into a kind of retreat into a greyness. It tells you England, in its imagination, never restricted itself to this land mass here. Mm. The book is a very positive story, I thought, and yet there was a little twist at the end that you mentioned like your bags were packed, but you yes. weren't going yet. I is that a slight worry for the future or are you still yeah. positive? I, am, I have gradually uh, developed a real deep affection for England, partly because my daughter is half English, my husband is English, uh, my second husband is English, but it's you know, when things seem to be going bad as they are now, the hostility towards newcomers, those of us who are settled feel it too. Mm. And you always, if you are an, a, a refugee or an exile like I am, you always keep your bag half packed. 
because you never know. Mm. You know, I'm a twice removed migrant now already from my ancestors from India to Africa, then thrown out of Africa to here. Mm. You never can tell. Mm. You talk about emotion. Um, writing a book is in itself an emotional experience, no matter if it's an academic book or whatever it is, you put yourself into it. What would you like to be the, the impact? What were you trying to achieve? And, and do you think you've actually had a, an impact? I'm certainly beginning to. I mean, I've done 26 book festivals this year. And I've got four more, and the final one is in India, in Bombay in December, for this year. And I think, especially the sort of people who come to the book festivals, come expecting me to be furious, mm. because I'm often furious in my mm. columns and uh, in my appearances when it comes to the politics of this country, often. Uh, and then they find that this is actually a book which not only is a declaration of affection and love, but actually, I mean, so many English people of all ages have said to me, you've made us feel good about being English. Mm, mm, this is really mm, important to me. Mm, yeah. But I also take it into Muslim areas because I want this, this to break through this terrible framework that they, meaning the Brits or the English or the Europeans, have always hated us. Mm since the Crusades. Mm. And I'm saying to them, actually, then they have not. Mm. Christopher Wren said, St. Paul's Cathedral, the style was Indo-Saracenic. Mm. You have been here, I've told them, mm. since the 16th century. Mm. And you have not just been slaves, or, or, or you have been part of the good story mm. about um, multiracialism and multiculturalism, going back to Elizabeth I. So claim it. Mm. Don't behave as if you you can't belong, you won't belong. Mm. Well, tonight, just for an hour or two, we hope to claim you. And it's wonderful to have you here. It's wonderful to have you doing the Crick Lecture. It's, it's particularly nice that David will be here, David Blunkett. Yes. A friend of yours, a friend of Bernard's. So thanks for coming.